talk about some things in the angelic realm and put your mindset back into the Word of God. Right? It is not fastful to believe that the angels fell one time. The angels are still here. The fallen angels we're talking about. Now, you can't talk about the Word of God without knowing the influence of the fallen angels. And by the way, what angels do you think you're going to judge in the first place? Because the Bible says, know ye not that you would judge the angels? What angels are you going to judge? You're not going to judge the good ones. You're going to judge the bad ones. And why are you going to judge the fallen angels? Why? Anybody know why you're going to judge the fallen angels? Because you're living in the place of which they messed up. And you are being affected by what they did. And the only reason you can judge them is because you are living through their residue and what they're doing. Why do you think God said to love the world with that enmity with God? Surely God can change this world system if he desires to, but he's telling you this world system is being run by something not human. Does that make sense? Don't love the world or the things in the world. It is corrupt. That itself is an abomination of God. And so the fallen angels are an abomination. And so the only reason you're going to judge those fallen angels is because you're living in a world of which they have erected in these kingdoms. You know, in the Bible, it tells us, Jesus said, if my kingdom were of this world, that means his kingdom is not of this world. Didn't he say that? If my kingdom were of this world, well then, those in the kingdom will come and do something about you, but my kingdom is not of this world. See, he told us, so whose kingdom is here? And if you're skittish, if you're one of these highly skeptical folks, or you just don't want to tackle that subject, you need to tune out. If you don't want to hear it, if it's too scary, if it's not the right time for you to hear it, tune out. You got to tune out. It's not going to hurt my feelings because this will not be for everybody. But you got to tune out. And if you end up calling me crazy, then good. I did my job. Now we have to talk about the fallen angels. They were angels, but they disobeyed and they fell. They were forbidden and they were not able to go back. And they taught mankind things. They taught mankind a lot. A lot. And they never stopped. The first 200, which were the chiefs of tens, are bound. They're not coming back. They can't be unbound. Okay? They're not coming back. But one third were cast out of heaven. One third. 200 bound, one third cast out of heaven. Think about this. One third of the angels, we don't know what the approximate count is of the angels. There's got to be a lot of them. But some are bound. And even in, you know what, in the New Testament, it talks about this. And you're going to have to wake up with me and stay with me. There are fallen angels everywhere. And they're not bound. They're not bound. A lot of people deal with the negative influences and everything else. You have felt them in your life. You have been sitting there, and for the life of you, you couldn't shake a feeling you had all day. Right? You couldn't shake it. Let me give you a contrast here. If anybody has ever been in a state of peace because of the Word of God, everything about you changed in that moment. But when you're in a, some other state, you change accordingly. You do. You're, everything in your body begins to change. You've been dealing with the fallen angels and mankind have been dealing with the fallen angels. And the elitists keep it quiet. They don't want you to know you've been dealing with the fallen angels. And they've been doing a pretty good job of it. Now, I need to break that news to you. But there are a lot of people, and hardly anybody knows who they are, but they know that they're working. Keep you out of the mindset of anything to do with fallen angels. And you, if people sit there and call them ATs, and then they make friends with them, then the life turns into a horror story. Then eventually they begin to hate Christ. Same pattern over and over and over again. And then they end up calling themselves religious people, but they don't like Christ. 
And then they end up saying the ultimate thing. Oh, we are gods ourselves. That's what they say. And believe it or not, for a lot of you who are listening to me and on air, they tried to wiggle their way into your life. They did. They tried to capture your attention. Because they'll take you by invitation. And once they get in your life, they'll turn your life upside down. And you really think you're getting somewhere. Ooh, I'm finding out the truth. And they will turn your life upside down. They will have you forever learning and ever coming to the knowledge of the truth. Because they creep and sneak around. That's what they've done, these fallen angels. So as much as I do not like to cover the topic about, you know, people from the planet Hamburger, I need to tell you that these things are fallen angels. Some of them, some of them, not everything you see is a fallen angel. You know what? Didn't the Bible say there was a war in heaven? Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. There was a war in heaven. That the dragon was cast to earth and one third of the angels were cast out to so what's that tell you? That, that means that the good angels also can be in places. places. Now, the Bible never explained to you how they traveled, did they? Didn't, didn't explain that to you. But we know by reading in the book of Daniel something very, very peculiar. And you match the dates up yourself. Gabriel was sent to Daniel. But the prince of Persia was stood at 21 days. And he had to go get Michael, his prince, to help him out, his boss, Michael. That was the only way he could break through. Well, wouldn't you know it? Something happened in the desert during that time. People saw two shields, one shield at first. Then they saw another shield. That's what they call them, shields, because they had to use some kind of definition in the context. We're talking about soldiers upon soldiers saw the same thing. And they began to throw spears at him. And it was a third light, or set of lights, that seemed like these two shields were in battle with something else they didn't know about. They said they're watching. Right? They said they're watching. Wouldn't you know it? it, it you know, it is so amazing. This happened during the same time that it was purported that Daniel the, the, the words of Daniel, or, or when Daniel occupied in that place. So what am I saying here? You don't know what you're seeing up there. You don't know what you're seeing around you. But the one thing you do know is that God's angels are sent and they do not creep around. They're not seductive, but the other ones are. So how do you discern between the two? How do you do that? Did you notice when Gabriel came to Daniel, it scared him to death? And he was all about the Father's business. Daniel, as soon as the Lord heard your prayer, he did this and he told he sent me. When you set your heart to supplicate, they were all about business. What do the other ones do? They say, hey, I come in peace. I come in peace. That's what they say. We want to show you what you really are. In other words, they're trying to change you into what they are. They want you to have their mindset. You see, the fallen angels are extremely intelligent, sophisticated. They know all about technology and everything else. That's what got them in trouble in the first place. Part of that, they begin to share technology with people. And so they cause an interest in people that people just can't let go. They... they Make people go down rabbit holes. And while you're going down the rabbit hole with these guys, you're missing everything else Jesus was trying. He warned us. He gave us a lifestyle to live by so that we won't fall prey to them. How many people know that? That the words of Christ gave us a lifestyle so that we don't fall prey to the fallen angels. If mankind could fix the problems on this earth, God himself would not have to come back. That means the problem is above humanity, just so you know. Something else is in play here. And it's time we all wake up to the fact and truly understand we're going to stop fighting against people and get to the source of the problem. 
But if you don't believe in good angels or bad angels, you're going to be lost because you're warring against principalities and powers, which are bad angels and demons. The word demon came from the word intelligent. They don't jump out and go boo either. They're very seductive. They know the art of seduction. They know what you're interested in. How did they know this? Because they're all over the place. And when you were born, they were trying to find a way in. You tell them everything they need to know because you complain too much. Anytime your feelings get hurt, you display your emotions. Of course they can see you. They just can't touch you. And that's why they need the invitation. They want you to say the magic words. And yes, I said magic. They want you to talk to them and to say, well, just come in and show me the truth. That's what they want. Do you know how many people are doing that these days? They're not saying that to the Lord. Lord Jesus of Nazareth, show me the truth. That's not what they're saying. They're saying, oh, people from the planet Hamburger, if you're really out there, show me the truth. And what they're doing is communicating with demons. And all these other people who are playing around with paranormal activity, they're entertaining demons. That's what they're doing. They're entertaining demons. And then that demon gets attached to their lives because they constantly look for doorways in. Jesus gave us instruction on how to shut every single last door. The problem is nobody wants to listen to Jesus because it's boring. It's not exciting. That's not exciting, Jesus. I, I want to do it, but I just can't. I guess I have to grow some more. No, and Jesus is saying, listen, you can change today. Only your dodo flesh is telling you it's going to take 10 years. And then the people who say this at the last moment, they're going to be caught off guard. Jesus will come when they're unaware because they're too busy making excuses for the flesh. Now I'm going to read something to you. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near. And it hasteth greatly. That means it comes quickly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. What? The mighty men shall cry there bitterly? Who are those people, the mighty men? The men in control are the mighty men. The men in control are going to cry bitterly. Now, why would they cry bitterly? Why? Because you're going to find out they've been tricked into serving the wrong side. And when the day of the Lord comes, so does truth. And when they know the truth, that truth is going to break them in half. It's going to break them in half. The truth will. The truth will destroy them. Internal. Does everybody get that? So don't get fixated on the elite. They're not the ones with the power. The children of the living God have power. It's time that we stop playing with these demons and entertaining them while they sit and begin to dictate portions of your life. It continues and it says, A day of the trumpet, an alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. The fenced cities, those are defended cities. Defended countries. No, def listen, all these weapons that you see are worth zip. They're worth zip. They're worth nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men. Because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as dung. He will not regard their emotions, feelings. They can say sorry all day, and it does not matter at that time. You know, there's a, there's a resounding thing that goes out. When the day of the Lord comes, you're going to be where you are. When the day of the Lord comes, you're going to be where you are. If it came today and you didn't get things right, you might be one of those 
whose blood is poured out as dust. That means meaningless. Your blood means nothing. And your flesh has done repulsive, worthless, when the day of the Lord comes. That's the wrong time to get it right. And no one will have an excuse in that day. Because every day of our lives, the Lord is telling each and every one of us, you better get it, get it right today. I love you. Get it right today. Get it right today. I love you. Get it right today. The Lord had called us by faith because we please him by faith. Those who receive the call by faith, by faith they shall enter. Once the day of the Lord comes, what do, what, I mean, what are people thinking? That all these things in Revelation, that they're still just, you know, they're, to, you know, they're not really going to suffer. The beasts, they won't really have sores. They won't really hope to die and can't. That means something they couldn't repent. You know what happens when the truth of the Lord comes upon you? You're convicted. You're not happy. When the truth of the Lord comes upon you, you are not happy. You're convicted. You begin to see what you really are. You're not happy. You're convicted. You see every foul thing about yourself, and then you call Jesus, please help me. Your heart is broken. You sit pitiful, naked, fully exposed. And you're, it's not a happy time. The happy time comes after you realize it. And then you realize the Lord just gave me a chance for correction. I can correct it. He's given me this moment to correct this filth on it. You see, and that's why... The, I, who out there has had that moment? I've had them. That's why I can tell you people that say, Oh, I'm squeaky clean. They're blind. They haven't had that moment. There's no cleanness in the flesh. There's no good thing in the flesh. And when that comes upon you, when the truth comes upon you, the first person who is broken is the one who receives it. At that point, you're no longer thinking about anybody, are you? You don't think about any problem in the world or anything else. You realize how filthy you are. You do realize that. You really don't realize that's a gift of the Lord upon your life at that moment. Because how could you turn away from something you can never see? How could you do that? How could you repent for anything? It's not exposed. That is God's true love towards us, to break us. That breaks your flesh. That makes you want to run out of your own flesh. It destroys any bitterness you had against anybody. It ruins your earthly plans because they're not God's plans. You see, at that moment, although it doesn't last very long, because that's a lot of pressure. You realize you're not living for him. You were living for yourself. And saying that you were living for him. Can you imagine if the Lord didn't do that? We got up before the Father. And people say, well, Lord, I, I started a ministry. And then the Lord says, you benefited from that ministry, not me. Well, that's out the window. Then you say, well, Lord, I told people about you. You did that so you could be accepted. You didn't do that for me. See, you start running out of things to tell him you did for him because everything was about you. If you have so much, if you receiving things of your service for God in this world to another person, you're helping yourself out. But when all that's exposed, you begin to say, uh-oh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Lord, I, I have to get this right. I have to get this straight. I mean, you, you know what? Somebody... This is funny. I, I, I was nervous. Let me tell you how, how, well, I can't tell you that. I won't do it. But let's just say this. 
Somebody in this chat room asked me to do something this morning. And it made me nervous because I had to hurry up and do it. I had to hurry up and do it. That person knows what I'm talking about. I had to hurry up and do it. Hurry up and get it done. So what I'm saying is this. If anybody expects you, expects of you something spiritual, you can destroy yourself by not performing spiritually. And in truth, you can destroy your conscience and everything else. And the only way out of a destroyed conscience is to have it seared with a hot iron. To say the word, I don't care what they, you know, I don't care. You better care. Who influences us to be blind to so many things? Who influences mankind to puff them up in their hearts, saying, I don't need to change. I've made it to this level, and you're still at stage one. Who does this? That's an influence of the wickedness of the flesh, amplified by the instruction of the fallen angels, right? Exemplified and maintained by demonic entities who are constantly whispering. Let me tell you what a demon really does. While everybody thinks they go out and they just say who at a person, what they do is they are the bearers of bad news. And they go from one person to the other, bringing down their day through bad news, useless news. And they don't want your day to be good. They don't want your day to be productive. And when I say good, I mean good, spiritually good. And so what they do is they keep stuff going. That's what they do. They feed upon the negative emotions of an individual. And they keep things going. And people fall into that trap. You know what's going to happen with the electromagnetic changes? People will. They're going to have heart attacks left and right. Actually, it's already beginning. Too soon. And as far as I know, it's too soon. I, I can tell you this. They're not going to call some of you crazy anymore. That'll be the last thing that they ever say to you. That'll be the last thing they say to you. But then again, you're not going to worry about that either. Because you might be there shivering, trying to hold on to things. Saying, oh Lord, keep it together, keep it together. I knew this was coming, i got to keep it together. Because if you think you can handle the day of the Lord, that day of gloominess, that day of wasteness and desolation, a day of clouds and thick darkness... If you think you can handle that, you're absolutely 100% wrong because you cannot. It is only power of the living God working and protecting you and being within you that will save you from dying in your sins that day. It is fear upon fear. It is a day no one should hope for. Even God himself said that. A fool asks for the day of the Lord. And if he said a fool asks for it, what in the world? Why do people want their own destruction to come so swiftly? So, everything is altered. And every one of us, you have been dealing with fallen angels and demonic entities. You need to understand that that's what you've been dealing with and overcoming when they're called principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Another name for those principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places are fallen angels and demons. And if they are given an area, if they're given an area to operate, you're not going to kick them out of that area. You're not going to do that. That would be like evicting Satan. If you said, well, I can evict Satan from the earth. No, you cannot. Because he has a purpose in the earth. But God called you to a different purpose. So stop playing with Satan and the fallen angels and demons. Or you're going to find yourself serving their purpose. He called you to his purpose. He gave you every tool necessary to overcome them. You don't have to be intermingled. You're supposed to be walking around with the discernment to see when these things are messing in someone's life. And then intercede with them. You don't even have to show yourself to intercede with them. God's word, I'm telling you, it's powerful, it's true, it's effective. Now, you believe angels and demons by God's word. Why won't you believe the rest that Jesus said? 
there are a lot of people who dispute what Jesus said. Shameful thing. And that's why they're miserable. You know, misery is the spirit itself. Oh, by the way, mankind has named through every discipline, psychology, and the sciences and everything else, they have named these demonic entities. And you speak about them every single day. You call the names out of these demonic entities. I, I know one specifically. You ready for this? There was one moment I'll speak of. I suppose there were witnesses listening. There was a person who started sweating. Who, I mean, they're just counting kind of changed like a cold sweat. They turned into like this, this, uh, the skin looked like the color was leaving in certain areas, right? A prayer began. Did you know what the demon said his name was? Now, it, this wasn't no fake demon either. This wasn't a person who just went loony. It, it, he didn't just go loony. The demon's name was Hopelessness. That was the demon's name, Hopelessness. Imagine that. The demon's name was Hopelessness. And it was more than one. That was his name, Hopelessness. We take that term, and we use it all the time, don't we? And then people justify the demons that people have. A lot of people say, well, you know, it's a medical condition, this, that, and really, have you tried God's word first? And do you have the patience to wait for the results? Or are you just willing to slap a name on something and keep it? Does that, does that really keep you calm? If you go to a doctor and the doctor says, well, you just have mild depression. Uh-uh. Don't, 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 don't li listen to me, please. How do you know a demon's name does not translate into depression? And then the doctor says, well, you have. What if somebody came up and said, well, you just have Charlie. And you said, oh, that makes it better. Now that you know what I have, I can live with it. No, I don't want to live with it. After you've given it a name. You see, the world is designed. Now, Jesus said, didn't Jesus say? That to love the world is to have enmity with God. Right? Didn't he say that? There's no goodness in this world according to our Father in heaven. So guess what? If you accept that you have it, well, then you have it. Stop accepting that you have it. I cross sick people every day and they say, well, you see, they say, well I've got this and I've got that and I've got that. You, they've got to change their language because psychologically what they're doing is training themselves to accommodate that thing. Don't accommodate that thing. You'd be shocked. And that for the, you know what, they need to go ahead and start out a list of these psychological terms that equate to demonic demonic entities' names because they have very basic names. Chaos is another. That's another. Anger is another one. It's another one. Those are many also. And people say, well, I, you know, this is, this is my condition. And they claim it through their speech. This is my condition. And they take something to keep it. They take something to keep it. Don't do that. That's why people can't break free. They'll trust in the word of God. Well, the Lord said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Whose knowledge is knowledge? Not the world's knowledge. And what they do is, they begin by their, in the, that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And what they're doing is accepting death into their life, which causes physical decay. 